Is your name, please? My name is Jane Baldessera. What is your name, please? My name is Jane Baldessera. What is your name, please? My name is Jane Baldessera. Two of these people are imposters. Only one is the real Jane Baldessera and is the only one sworn to tell the truth. Now, here is our host, Bud Collier. Thank you very much, and welcome once again to To Tell the Truth. Now may I introduce our panel. First, Miss Polly Bergen. Then, Mr. Don Amici. Next, Miss Kitty Carlisle. And finally, Mr. Peter Donnell. Don, may I say how happy we are to have you back with us? Thank you, Bud. I'm glad to be back. And it's always our pleasure. Would you follow along, panel, with your copies of this first affidavit? I, Jane Baldessaire, did not learn to swim until I got married. Now, six years later, I hold two world skin diving records. In July, I set the current woman's record for underwater endurance by remaining submerged for 62 consecutive hours. Last month, I swam a longer distance underwater than any other man or woman had ever done before. I swam 14 miles without coming to the surface. Signed, Jane Baldessaire. <laughs> As you heard, panel, we begin tonight's festivities by three young ladies all claiming to be Jane Baldessaire, underwater record holder. Ladies, you all set and ready to go? All right, let's begin tonight's questioning with Don Amici. Don, please. Uh, number one, uh, what did you learn in your first swimming lesson? Uh, number three, what did you learn in your first swimming lesson? The dog paddle. <laughs> uh, number two, what, uh, when you go skin diving, what do you put on first after your, after your suit? Uh, it's uh, optional. You can put on your mask, fins. Uh, number three, what is the record depth of, uh, that a skin diver has gone to? Somewhere around 300 feet, I think. Uh, number one, what did you eat when you were under the water for 62 hours? Uh, mostly baby food and uh, chocolate bars. Um, number two, how did you eat this? I ate it through a plastic tube sent down in a plastic container. Uh, number, uh, number three, uh, when you swam the 14 miles underwater, where did you start and where did you finish? Well, it was a marked course. I started at one stake, swam around the other stake and back again. We did, uh, I mean, I did 1470 laps around a fifth of a mile course. Uh, Kitty Carlisle. Number two, you said you had chocolate bars. How did you get them in your mouth? Very simple when you're under the water to chew on a, on a concrete Did you lift your mask? Uh, yes, I took the mouthpiece out and I took a bite of the chocolate. And number two, uh, who held the underwater championship diving before you did? Number two. Diving? My husband. I mean, uh, 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 right, long distance oh. record. Uh, yeah, long My distance husband. Record. Oh, we shouldn't have taught you how to swim. <laughs> uh, number three, do you carry a knife when you uh, are under the water? No. Number one, do you care? May I see your hands, both number two and three? Would you hold Only them up Only one at a time, please. Huh? Only one or the other. Can't question two at a time. Question one at a time. Well, oh. you're going to ring that bell, and I, I want to see both of them. I have you are here with me. Peter <laughs> Donald, I didn't get to see either one. Uh, number one, uh, why did you learn to wait to swim until you got married? Well, where I live, uh, there isn't an ocean nearby, and I don't care to swim in a pool. And after I married, uh, I went to the coast and learned to swim. I see. Uh, number three, who is Monsieur Cousteau? Oh, he's a famous Frenchman that, uh, well, he's usually credited with uh, the <laughs> perfecting the, well, he's usually credited with developing the lung, lung, but however, he only really perfected it was uh, some Italian who really uh, discovered it and made the first lung. Thank you. Number two, um, when you got all this food, who served this to you? I mean, what, do we have underwater waiters now? <laughs> who served that? Well, it was sort of a, a novelty thing. There were various skin divers that came down, exhibitionists that came down intermittently every, about once every seven hours and fed me. Polly Bergen. Um, number three, oh, what's a silent world? 
Oh, that famous Frenchman. Uh, that was the uh, movie that he made. Number two, it says here in the affidavit that you stayed under for 62 hours. What did you do to, uh, you know, amuse yourself? Well, I ate. I ate every seven. I ate quite often, and I played cards. Poker. Played cards? <laughs> With a card Not chart. Not like in the ocean, or... <laughs> My daughter would play Go Fish. Like uh, number one, uh, it says here that you, you swam 14 miles without coming to service. How many uh, uh, tanks did you use? Uh, they changed about every 45 minutes, so about I used every... about uh, 30 tanks. Number. That's it, panel. It's time to vote for the first time tonight. And without consultation, as usual, will you please mark your ballots? And in so doing, select number one, number two, R number three. Team of challengers will get $250 for every incorrect vote. Okay, panel, all set. Holly, all ready? Who's your choice this time? I voted for number one. Because she didn't say very much. <laughs> <laughs> and you figured that underwater she couldn't. <laughs> well, number three said almost too much, and number two said an awful lot, and uh, my nurse always says it's the one that's the quietest. Uh, she got back from vacation. Oh, she did? Yeah. All right, Don, what about your vote? I, I know it's for number three. <laughs> I wish I had some real good reasoning like Polly had here to get for this, but I don't. <laughs> Kitty, your vote, please. I voted for number one. I, I think she's wearing a wedding ring, and I'm not sure about the other two. And I thought it was number two, but um, I didn't see her fingers. And number three said it was an Italian who invented the lung, and Polly knows better than that. I do. <laughs> oh, I mean, I do. I do. You always ask that question. Peter, what is your vote? Well, but I voted for number three, just because number three uh, knew about Monsieur Cousteau. And uh, I may have seen her uh, down in the ocean because I've been on the bottom of this panel for two weeks. <laughs> I, haven't, I haven't come up for air yet with a right guess. Well, let's see if you break the ice, so to speak, and do better this time. Get in the swim with all the rest of us. Since the votes are all in, we'll discover now which one of these ladies is the real underwater record holder. So will the real Jane Baldessaire please stand up. <laughs> Thank you very much, Jane. Number two, would you tell us your real name and what you really do, please? I'm afraid I can't. I'm going to be in the next game. Oh, here we go. Oh. oh, well, all right, number three. You got two votes. Your real name, please, and what you do. <laughs> I'm going to say the same thing. I'm sorry I can't. I'm going to be in the next game also. <laughs> in checking on the score, we find it was two and two and nothing for number two, and the right one got uh, two and the wrong one got two. So, therefore, there were two incorrect votes at $250 each for a total of $500 for Marlboro ladies. Thank you very much for being with us. Uh, Jane, good night and good luck. You'll find a carton of Marlboro cigarettes for each of you on the way out. And numbers two and three, we'll see you later. <laughs> <laughs> all right, we have a little announcement for all of you. And panel, I suppose you don't have to be reminded of it. And that is that uh, this is the last week to tell the truth will be seen at this time. Next week and every week thereafter, we will be seen on Thursday nights at 7.30 New York time. Mark it down, panel. And mark it down, audience, so you're with us next week. And now let's have our next team of challenges. What is your name, please? My name is Helen Mann. What is your name, please? My name is Helen Mann. What is your name, please? My name is Helen Mann. Follow along again, panel, as I read this affidavit. I, Helen Mann, am a mathematical analyst and a member of the American Rocket Society. For a time, I was a college physics instructor. At present, I am working at Cocoa Beach, Florida as a missile tracker. Using electronic devices, it is my job to gather information on the flight performance of rockets fired from nearby Cape Canaveral. Signed, Helen Mann. here we have three ladies, two of whom you've already met, claiming to be Helen Mann, missile tracker of the missiles fired from Cape Canaveral. 
show is getting more and more rotten. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's start this cross-examination with Peter Donald. Pete, please. Uh, number three, did your husband really teach you how to swim? <laughs> Uh, number one, what is a Wheatstone Bridge, as an old physicist? Gosh, I'm so nervous right now, I can't remember. Number three, what is a Wheatstone Bridge? Number two, what is a Wheatstone Bridge? It's a phys physicist measuring device. Mm-hmm. Uh, number two, what is a Luthra? A Luthra? A Luthra. I'm a little too introverted right now. Number one, what is a Luthra? Isn't that a missile? Uh, number um, three, what is the name of the, uh, the panic button that uh, blows up a misled missile when they go, uh, you know, when your taxes go this way with them? <laughs> panic button. <laughs> uh, Holly? Are you sure one of these is the real Helen Man? <laughs> Uh, I was only teasing. Uh, not really, but number one, uh, where is the headquarters of the American Rocket Society? Uh, many people think it's in Washington, D.C., but actually it's in New York City. It's in New York City. Number two, exactly where is it in New York City? What well, government are you working for, Miss Bergen? <laughs> it's in the neighborhood of the uh, Middle East, about 50s. Number three, do you know where it is exactly? I think it's on Park Avenue. Uh, number one, how do you become a member of the American Society? Of well, you've got, you've got to be a qualified scientist, and you've got to belong to the Missile Association, American Missile Association. American Missile Association. Don Amici. I didn't ask anything yet. Number, uh, number three, what degrees do you have? Uh, B.A. and M.S. in physics. I mean, and what? Physics. Uh, number, uh, number, uh, one, what did you major in in college? Physics. Uh, number two, where did you teach? I taught in Barry College in Miami, Florida. Uh, number one, in tracking missiles, uh, uh, what electronic devices do you use? Mainly the Azusa. We use the radar and we use a visual device. Uh, number three, is uh, Cocoa Beach north or south of uh, Cape Canaveral? South. Uh, number Two, how long before a missile orbits? Um, minutes. I would say at least 15 minutes. No. Kitty? Number one, what is zip when it's applied to fuel, rocket fuel? Uh, that's the fuel that is given to the rocket when it goes off, when, that, that sends it off. Number two, what is the quantum theory? You're asking me all these elementary things that are a little... <laughs> Equations. Wave equations, number three. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> Where did you I learn know. all this? <laughs> <laughs> number one, who is Dr. John P. Hogan? And uh, number two, can you tell me the name of the commanding general at Cape Canaveral? The commanding general is uh, McElroy, and the head of uh, RCA is General Sarno. That's it. Once again, time to vote, panel. And again, no consultation, please. Just mark your ballots. And as you did before, select number one, number two, or number three. All set? Vote's all in. Uh, Polly? All right. For whom did you vote, Polly? The only thing I'm sure of is that we're going at 7.30 next week. <laughs> Are you sure one of yes. them is the real Ellen? <laughs> for whom is your vote? All right. I vote for number three, though she talked too much the last time. But she didn't say very much of anything this time. But then again, neither did number one or number two. <laughs> <laughs> I don't really... Well, it has to be one of them. I mean, it really does. Well, Doesn't your, it? your vote is vague, but your reasons are very sound. Uh, Don, what is your vote? I voted for number three, but I agree with Polly. I don't think it's any one of the three. <laughs> Kitty, your vote, please. I voted for number three. Uh, number one said that uh, she didn't know what the uh, quantum theory was, and number two said it was an elementary theory, which I don't think is true, and number three didn't know what wave equations were. I wouldn't answer in a hurry. I think she knows. All right, Pete, what about your vote? Well, I voted for number two because uh, <laughs> all 
I know about physics is a white stone, a wheat stone bridge. No, the white stone bridge is that way. And I thought, uh, I thought she seemed to know a little bit more about it than the others. That's all. I know I don't. <laughs> all right, there we have it. Maybe this will break the jinx for you, Pete. Let's see. Once again, we'll find out which one of our three challengers, <laughs> two of whom are now old friends, is the real missile tracker of the missiles fired from Cape Canaveral. So will the real Helen Mann please stand up? <laughs> Helen, thank you very much, very much indeed. Number one, would you tell us your real name, please, and what you do? I'm afraid I can't do that. I'm playing the next game. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> this guy's <laughs> Well, all right. Number two, are you going to tell us your name now? I'm afraid now that I'm going to be in the next game. <laughs> <laughs> See you again in the next game. And checking up on the score, we find there were one, two, three uh, correct votes we had that time. Only one incorrect at $250 for a total of just that $250 from Marlboro. Ladies, thank you very much. Uh, on your way out, you'll find that you're collecting a large supply of cartons of Marlboro cigarettes. <laughs> but you'll enjoy them, I'm sure. Thank you very much. And uh, see a couple of you in just a little while. Bye. Now, panel, let's meet our third team of challengers. What is your name, please? My name is Faith Dane. What is your name, please? My name is Faith Dane. What is your name, please? My name is Faith Dane. Follow along once more, panel, with your copies of this next affidavit. I, Faith Dane, am a featured player in the Broadway musical hit, Gypsy. I am also a professional portrait painter. I have done portraits of Ethel Merman, Marlon Brando, and many other show business people. I also play the flute, the drums, and the bugle. I learned to play the bugle when I was eight years old. My part in Gypsy requires me to play the bugle in a number called You Gotta Have a Gimmick. Signed, Faith Dane. Three ladies this time, two old friends, all claiming to be Faith Dane, showgirl in Gypsy. And when you're all set, ladies, we will start this round of questioning with Polly Birkin. Polly? <laughs> uh, number one, uh, shortly after Gypsy opened, uh, a performance had to be canceled because Miss Ethel Merman had a previous commitment. Do you know what that commitment was? Gosh, number two, would you be able to tell me? Um, I believe, uh, something was happening out west. Number three, uh, uh, there is a part in the show called Baby June. At one point during the rehearsal and preparation of the show, they had to change that name, and then later on it was changed back. Could you tell me what the name was changed to for a short time? Um, I believe it had something to do with the color of her hair. Number one, could you tell me? No, I don't. Number two? John? Number two, where'd you rehearse here in New York? We, we rehearsed at uh, many rehearsal centers. Uh, and a couple of theaters, I don't remember. The number name. three, how long did you rehearse before you went on the road? Oh, we rehearsed for about, um, gee, it was about two and a half months. Uh, number one, where did you open out of town? What theater? Uh, in Philadelphia. Um... Number two, what theater in Philadelphia? Number three, what theater? Um, the Schubert Theater in Philadelphia. Uh, number number uh, uh, one, who is El Greco? El Greco is a painter, a Spanish painter. Uh, number two, uh, what kind of pictures does Franz Hals paint? I believe Franz Hals is one of the old masters. Number three, what kind of pictures does he paint? Um, I believe that he was um, more or less um, dealt in abstract. He was number one, abstract. Kitty? Number one, uh, who produced Gypsy? The producer was uh, Merrick and Haywood. Number two, for standing on the stage facing the audience, uh, at, at which hand is Miss Merman's dressing room? Number two. The right side. Uh, number three, you're a painter. What is gouache? 
Well, gouache is a um, watercolor. In number tempera. two, uh, I mean number one, what is tempera? Tempera is a watercolor mixed with egg. And number two, what is chiaroscuro? Chiaroscuro? Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's a technique, of some, something I don't know about. Hey, chiaroscuro is the, um, is the study of color and shadow, is it not? Let's play our own game. Sort of a, uh, sort of a penumbra. Uh, number one, um, who plays June Havoc as a little girl in Gypsy? Uh, I can't remember her name right now. Number one, going back to the other question, uh, do you know what name was uh, substituted for baby June? Uh, no, no. Um, number three, when you play the bugle, are they all in the same key? Do you all play in the same key on the bugle? Are you talking to me? Number three. Oh, oh pardon me. Um, no. No? No. And that's it, panel. That Time once again to mark your ballots and vote. <laughs> so will you kindly do so? And in so doing, you will be voting for number one, number two, or number three. They win, panel. Everybody mark? Yes. Holly, all set? Who so, did you vote? Uh, I voted for number two. She knew where... Uh, uh, Ethel's dressing room is. It's on the right of the stage, and she also knew that Miss Merman had a commitment back uh, west. It was her daughter's, I believe, her daughter's graduation. Mm -hmm. Don? I voted for number three because uh, she said Brown's house was an abstract painting. Is he? No. Oh, he isn't? <laughs> is that why you voted? Then why did you vote for her? I don't know. Well, none of the three has said this. Kitty, your vote. Well, I voted for number two for the reasons that Polly said, and also by a process of elimination. Number three said that Frank's, uh, that uh, House was an abstract painter, which I, I thought you meant uh, House was the old master. And number one didn't know much about who the people in the show were or where they opened out of town. Peter, your vote, please. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. <clears throat> I voted for number one. <laughs> Because I just think that some of her answers were a little more correct about the show, and also tempura is not paint mixed with egg, it's Japanese shrimp mixed with egg, and I've eaten it many times. <laughs> <laughs> I like more. All right, there you have it again. Now let's see how well we did and whether we finally managed to pull Peter out of the doldrums, or out of the tempura, or the penumbra, or wherever you're loitering. Let's find out which one of these three ladies is the real showgirl in the show Gypsy. Now, ladies, would each of you please stand up? All three of you, please stand. All right, now, you have a bugle, I notice. Will the real Faith Dane please play the bugle? Please. Yes, please. Would you please have her play taps for me? <laughs> <laughs> Let's find out first. Number one, would you tell us who you really are, your name now, and what you do, please? Yes. My name is Anna Mizrahi, and I work with the International School Festival of the United Nations. Thank you. Now, number three, would you tell us your real name and what you do, please? My name is Patricia Gautier, and I'm a secretary and a freelance writer. Well, we check up on the score and find two incorrect votes this time at $250 each for a total of $500 from Marlboro and plenty of Marlboro cigarettes, which you find on the way out again, ladies. Split them up and enjoy them, and thanks very much for being with us. I hope you had a good time. You can play taps quietly outside for Peter. <laughs> good night and good luck. about your health. That's all the time we have for tonight, except remember, next week we come to you at a new time, not Tuesday, but Thursday night, 7.30, New York time. Be sure to be with us then. Incidentally, all of you folks out in Indianapolis, Indiana, as well as the, uh, let's see, what's the other one now? Birmingham, Birmingham, Alabama. You're going to be treated to our own Kitty Carlisle, who's giving some lectures there. Lectures uh, first off in the uh, 
Executive Club in Birmingham and the town hall meeting in Indianapolis on Friday. Good luck, Kitty. Thank you. Good night, panel. Good night. Good night, Bud. Bud Collier saying good night from Marlboro and reminding all of you to tell the truth. Good night, everybody. To tell the truth is about Goodson Bill Cottonwood Production in association with the CBS Television Network. It's further to by Wilmot.